uh, like to welcome everybody to the first episode of Podviz.net. Uh, today we're talking with Chris Marks. He is a uh, owns a music school in Seattle, and we are going to talk about Lean and how Lean applies to small business. Uh, so, welcome, Chris. How are you? Doing good. Thanks. All right. So, a um, little bit of background on Chris's. What Chris is wanting to do is expand to a second location, and with that, uh, there's several several things you need to take into account. We started talking, and we started looking at. Uh, he also has an interest in Lean and Six Sigma, and wanted to improve his business processes internally. So, through our discussions, uh, we quickly found that um, he has more than enough. Uh, music teachers to cover two locations, uh, but administrative staff is, would be the real challenge. So uh, what Chris wanted to do was look into the possibilities of leaning out his administrative functions and improving them to where they're replicatable uh, across multiple locations in the future when he does decide to expand. So anything you want to add to that, Chris? No, that's, yeah, that sounds good. We're always just looking for ways to make things more efficient. Okay, so... We, um, start out, we usually start something by just trying to get it to work, and we're not too worried about it making money, and then we try to figure out, is this <laughs> yeah. a more efficient way to do this so we can save some money here or there? <laughs> for sure. Well, let me, I'd like to cover real quick, a lot of people are, you know, hear the term lean, and... I, I created a definition, my definition today of what uh, lean is and how we're going to apply it in this situation to small business. So if you don't mind me reading this real quick, uh, lean is a discipline of, uh, applied within an organization to improve quality and speed for the customer while reducing waste by improving process and reducing the number of defects or duplicate work. So as we had had in a previous conversation, not live, but... Uh, you and I had talked about that some of your administrative tasks take a lot, quite a bit of time, uh, and you feel that there could be um, room for improvement. Yeah. So and we're um, not big enough. We're not big enough to where we have different departments. I mean, it's a small organization. Like, yeah. um, exactly. Exactly. But we don't have right. different groups duplicating work or do, reworking the same thing that has already been done. But we could probably streamline with some software or something like that. Or, Exactly, and well, when you let's hypothetically say you're ready to move to two locations, well, you have plenty of instructors. You know, the idea is is you would have more uh, classrooms available, so your instructors could have more appointments, thus increasing revenue. However, with that said, now your small administrative team is now spread across two locations, and the current um, overhead that you spend time per month on your administrative tasks will now be doubled. Right. So we need to figure out a way that you, you can manage both locations with the staff you have while uh, improving your process across, you know, prior to the move. Right. Uh, so um, some of the things that we've talked about before, um, you know, leans about leaning, uh, getting rid of waste. Okay, so um, the uh, some of the suggestions. Let me see. One of the one of the problems too is that we can't expand because we're worried about adding more waste or making it more inefficient. Oh. So, are we still there? Yep, I'm here. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so we want to have two people doing our scheduling and billing and the you know the office work, um, but we're. You know, it's really efficient to have one person do it. She can keep it all in her head. And yeah. if you add a second person, that's now they have to communicate, and that's where I see a lot of inefficiencies developing. Well, uh, and like we talked about in the future, that if you do get to the point where you have the the uh, the level of business and the capability to have two people, you want some very uh, clean, clear, documented processes that can be taught to the new person so that you maintain that uh, efficiency. Yeah. And it's not lost, or if somebody has to fill in because somebody gets sick or uh, goes on vacation, uh, wins the lottery, you know, mm -hmm. you just never know. So having those processes documented. Um, one thing that we will 
uh, post to the YouTube channel and also to the uh, podbiz.net uh, blog will be uh, a document uh, for some quick tips for small businesses and how to apply lean. Um, if we take just a second, I want to just go over a couple of them. Like we've talked about, we've done some high-level uh, high um, uh, value stream mapping, looking at you, know, you had a good idea of your administrative tasks already and kind of the level of effort you have to put in every month. Um, one thing I suggest from a tip perspective is that people do a value stream mapping of all their processes. In this case, we'd be doing your administrative functions. And when you lay those out in a process flow, uh, it helps to point out where the waste is. It also can help you point out where opportunity might be. Um, so that's one thing. Also, by documenting your business processes, a lot of times you can um, identify non-value-add non activities. And, and a lot of times you can eliminate those and rework the process to accommodate that. So, um, anyway, with that said, so in your, um, what do you think about that, Chris? In the sense of, have you thought about doing a value stream mapping and really putting all of your processes on paper so that, that they're readable and uh, then you can start to look at how you want to operate in the future? Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, one of the things we're trying to do, and it's similar, is just get it all organized. We keep everything in Google Drive right now, and it's it's really hard to organize all those different documents. So we do have that a lot of that stuff written down, and now without seeing a big picture, you know, without zooming out, mm -hmm. all it's hard in Google Drive to organize it all and see all of the files. I have a mascot showing up. Yeah, the cat. That's awesome. Yeah. He one second here. I'll edit this part out of the video. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. That's kind of cool having the cat. <laughs> he likes to be in the window there. So, yeah, we got two of them. So um, it's more of a technical problem in that we have all these documents. With there's, you know, we're starting to edit them, revise them, go through iteration cycles with them. But there's still some holes here and there, and we don't have a master list of every single process. So we do need to probably zoom out and create that. It'd be nice yeah. because it'd be, cause sometimes we just create them spur of the moment, or we do create duplicate stuff. You know, someone will be like, "Oh, we need instructions for this." They'll quickly write out something, and then we realize we have something similar or titled slightly differently. You know, it might be training, and then the other one, the other one is probably systems instructions. Yeah. Or, you know, so we might have a training document over here that's also called instructions. It's also called something else, and so we end up duplicating some of it. So we're looking for some kind of technical solution there that might get, be able to give us a table of contents of all our files. Yep. No, that that sounds good. Um, you know, in future episodes, if we have the opportunity, you and I, you know, maybe we can perform some of those tasks down the road and bring that back to the YouTube channel and, yeah, and, you know, discuss uh, kind of the approach and how what we found and how how you decided to uh, move well, forward with that. Because um, it's pretty manual to go through. I could have somebody go through and make a list of every single document, and it would be great for a week or two or maybe even a month, but then, you know, it's going to change down the road, hopefully. It won't change too much as now we're getting into more of a stabilized position, but it's constantly changing. We're adding more documents and merging them and stuff like that. Well, and that's the thing is you – like you said, you're continually adding documents, and if that's the case, you know, if there's no way to track that, there's no way to understand, you know, and there's no doc, it's, you know, it's in somebody's head versus on paper. Yeah. It's a little hard. Um, yeah, next time, hopefully, we can, uh, uh, when we get back together, maybe have some examples of process flow of how we found your process, uh, mapping those out. That's one of my other uh, tips that will be attached to the document that will be on the YouTube channel and on the uh, on the blog is process flow out, you know, process, using process flows such as Visio or OpenOffice, they have a uh, draw tool mm -hmm. that allows you to, uh, with the use of shapes, different shapes, to create a picture of your entire end-to-end -end process. 
and how the flow works and what pro what step leads to the next step and on and on. So I think that would be a valuable um, exercise to go through. Um, let's see, other tips that we have. Um, also, one thing I did want to point out that I thought was interesting, and I think you hit the right on the nail on the head, was is that you're trying to leverage what you already have. You realize that maintaining what you currently have is a little bit larger uh, of effort than you want to spend, and that's more from an efficiency perspective. Um, but on the same token, you're trying to use the tools and the technology that you currently have to in, improve those processes. Uh, so that's one of the tips that I think it, that's, it's tip number three in the document, um, is leverage the resources you already have and try to improve the process. I mean, sometimes you need to add technology or a new computer or this or that, but if you don't have to and you can improve your process and streamline, eliminate waste, reduce the number of defects or errors. Uh, in your case, I could see somebody made an error on uh, recording a uh, tax, for example, and you send that in and it comes back, that's a lot of rework, and you know, then you gotta go through a whole bunch of mess just to try to get your tax situation cleared up. So those are kind of things that you can do to try to eliminate uh, and, and improve accuracy from the start. So we didn't plan on talking too much longer, I know uh, we gotta cut this off, so did you have any questions for me or anything you'd like to talk about this episode? Uh, no, I think we're. I think that's that's what I need to go figure out. I just wrote down some sticky notes here. <laughs> you know, kind of how to how to manage the documents, how to keep a you know a huge file list of of things and, and allow multiple people to edit them and yeah. get familiar with. You know, some people we want them to be able to see some of these documents, but we want to hide sensitive information as well if it's got something to do with taxes or you know payroll. Maybe they're not supposed to be at the level where they can see that. Exactly. Well, and again, taking the time to process flow out your current process, no matter how flawed it is, can help you to identify the areas that would be best served by a change and how to map that from where you are today to in a current state to a future state uh, document um, or kind of state of being. Yeah. So... Uh, and maybe that's a topic we can do on one of the future episodes here is uh, show an example of how how that at a very high level how you guys accomplish that if that would work for you. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I know you've got to run, so we'll go ahead and cut this episode short. Um, Chris, I appreciate you being here today on the first initial episode of podviz.net. Yeah. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Well, I appreciate your participation and allowing me to try to help you. Um, for your audience out there, please look at the uh, YouTube channel. There will be links to the documents. Um, there will also be the document attached uh, via podviz.net uh, attached to this video. And uh, look forward to, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll explore this topic later. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Andrew. All right, thanks, Chris. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Bye.